Are you looking to start reading the Bible more or don't know where to start? Then this video is for you. In this video, I am sharing some helpful tips to help you get started with reading scripture so you can feel more prepared and excited about reading God's word. Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy you are here and clicked on today's video. Today's video is going to be a little bit different than what I normally put out there, but I just have felt really called by the Holy Spirit to share this with you guys. And I just wanna open more doors on this platform to specifically speak out about the gospel and the love of Christ. If you clicked on today's video, that means you are wanting to learn more about how to read the Bible. And you might have been like me, who's been a Christian for a while now, but you just don't know where to start when it comes to reading your Bible because it can be very overwhelming. Trust me, as somebody who was a Christian for over 10 years and just felt very overwhelmed about the Bible because one, it's just really difficult to comprehend, and two, there are so many different books of the Bible and you're like, where do I start? Well, I wanted to share with you guys some tips that have helped me because I personally am on the journey of reading the gospel. All right, the first thing that you obviously need is a Bible. You do not have to have anything special. I personally love the Bibles that have lines on the side. These are called like note-taking Bibles so that I'm able to write notes on the side of whatever scripture I'm reading. I will link my Bible specifically down below. I got this for myself when I got baptized in August just to like kind of treat myself to a new Bible that I would really like and I wanted a leather bound Bible which is very like specific so you really can go to like Walmart or anywhere to get like a plain and simple Bible. I know for some of my girls out there who do want like a cute artsy Bible, Altered State has a lot of really really cute ones that have the hard covers and they have like the really beautiful designs I'll put some images here of them and those are really really cute the one I had before this one was like that and I did really like that one but I just really wanted something that was gonna be mature and last me until I'm like old and gray but with all that being said yes you need a Bible but pick a translation that works for you there are several different translations out there so some people like the King James version I personally have always grown up with NIV version just because it's a little bit easier for me to understand but also I've been loving ESV which is this Bible the actual Bible was written in a different language and so over the years they have kind of broken it up to help us understand it a little bit better by but still keeping the same storyline. One thing that has helped me is making sure you have some supplies to take notes and just kind of make Bible study fun. But I got these sticky notes. I will link them down below. They came in big packs. So there's a whole other color combo to go with this. Um, I just like the pastels and more of the muted colors instead of like the bright neon colors you see at the store, but those will work too. Don't be that picky. And you're also going to need some highlighters, but not just any highlighters because the Bible paper is super thin. So you're going to need to have like special highlighters so that you can highlight. You can go and just use a pen and underline what you want. I just use these Sharpie gel pens. They're nothing special, but they're fine tip and they're, they don't bleed through, which is really nice. But the highlighters that I have, these will be linked below. I have a couple of other ones that came in this pack. You can pick the colors that you want, but again, they're more muted. Some highlighters to make it fun and more enjoyable. I typically just highlight some really important keywords that I would like to go back to, um, something that the Lord is really speaking through me. The next tip that I have for you guys is get a journal. It doesn't have to be anything special. I just like the spiral bound because I like to obviously like fold up my <laughs> journals. I just picked this one up from TJ Maxx because I personally think they're cheaper than Target and a little bit cuter. So for the topics that I read in the Bible, that's like a lot. I don't want to take up a full margin. So I take out my little notebook and I'll write it down. But this is like how I've divided up Genesis so far in my Bible reading plan. And I kind of just set it up as some like key topics that are being discussed in that Bible. And then I put on a sticky note for each book of the Bible, the key notes that I have taken away. The key point of this conversation is get a journal a notebook, whatever your heart desires, because you're gonna have a lot of thoughts and 
if you're like me when i have a lot of thoughts i get overwhelmed and you're just gonna want to write that stuff down so get a notebook if you love to take notes in church this is what i use i typically don't take my notebook to church because that's more for like at home studies or like notes for my bible study things like that but i recommend getting a sermon notebook my mother-in-law gave me this for my baptism this year and i was so excited to get it but i like to take this to church because it gives you like a section for you to write the date sermon title speaker main points scripture and key verses it looks like this i can like if you guys can see this i just like how it gives you plenty of space to write in if you have any notes from that specific sunday service and that way like you have all your notes in one place the next topic that I have is find a devotional that works for you because sometimes it can be overwhelming to read the Bible and if you're a newbie, having a devotional will really help start you kind of, okay, finding the verses, how to relate it to that daily devotional and it can be something quick. It doesn't have to be super uh, long. I have been able to do a couple of studies with my church privately with my amazing small group leaders. We've done a lot of different studies over the past couple of semesters. I will link them down below for you guys if you're interested. If I can suggest you start off with one book, it would be this one. And I regret not starting off with this because the one that I started off with was really, really like difficult, especially for me as someone who hasn't devoted a lot of time to devotionals and just like knew of God, knew of the church, knew a couple of key verses, but like hadn't specifically dived deep in the word, it was overwhelming for me. So the one that I highly recommend you start is this one, it's called Seamless by Angie Smith. Again, I will link this down below. When I say, if you can take one thing from this video is to buy this book, of course with the Bible. I cannot tell you how life-changing this has been for me in my journey. The reason why I absolutely love this is because she will go from Genesis to Revelations in less than 170 pages. And she is so relatable and she literally makes jokes throughout the book and she's like, look, I know this is difficult to read, but we're gonna get through it. She breaks down every book of the Bible for you, gives you the key points of what's going on. But what I really enjoy with her is she'll say, okay, read Genesis 1, 12 or whatever. And then she'll ask you a question, write the answer down. And then below it, she'll give you the answer or give you the meaning behind it. So you're kind of like, you're not really second guessing yourself because the answer will be below it. But when I was reading this, I was like, you know what it kind of reminds me of is like devotionals for dummies. Like, I know that might be mean. You know how there's like all those dummies books. I'm like, this is how it feels like if you don't know where to start this she takes you from the beginning to end and breaks it down perfectly for you guys where it's not difficult to understand whatsoever so with all that being said though i really recommend this book i could go on and on about it if you have any questions about anything that i'm sharing i'm trying to keep this as brief as possible so if you have questions please either ask in the comments or email me. I would be happy to answer questions for you and even DM me on Instagram. You can always DM me prayer requests on there. I love to pray over my viewers. So please just feel free to DM me on there. If you aren't really the type to read like a daily devotional, you can always read a book that talks about scripture. Now my small group is going through the book Practicing the Way by John Mark Comer. Love this book. This one is so good. And this one's a lot different because it doesn't give you places to write. It's like literally like a book where this one by Seamless, it gives you writing room. And so it's kind of like you read it. This has more homework, if that makes sense. You're not like the devotional type where you have a devotional every day to read and you just wanna read like a book and take your own notes and learn more about God in that way. Then I do recommend this book. I've loved it so much sometimes when an author writes their devotional or christian book they're basing it off of their own thoughts their own journey when the bible itself comes directly from god's point of view i've heard just some in the past where 
it talks about like a Bible verse and then it goes and tells their childhood story of how Sarah, her neighbor, would come over and play and she was being rude and you know, things like that. It's like, what does that have to do with my life? You know, I understand it's their way of trying to relate to their readers, but to me, I'm picking up those books because I want to understand the gospel more. Just be cautious of the authors that you are picking up and reading. Um, that's why I always recommend people go to Target or like Barnes and Noble, a local bookstore, just to like open it up and read a couple of pages and see if it's something you would like because of the authors like sharing their story and saying, I grew up doing this instead of talking about Jesus and the Lord. I don't know if that's like the best option. So that's why I always suggest that. And like I said, at the end of the day, the Bible is God's truth. And God chose to speak through the Holy Spirit within those 40 chapters or 40 books. I always call them chapters, but I mean books. In 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17, it reads, all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Well, those verses are saying that scripture is useful for teaching, rebuking, and correcting, training the righteousness, and equipping for every good work. I wanted you to keep in mind the Bible is not technically written in chronological order. For the most part, it is. It's organized by the different literature, technically, and subject matter. I'm looking at my phone right now to kind of share with you guys some examples of how the books were kind of laid out technically, but you can like Google this image for yourself. For example, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, those are laws. And then for history, some of the books are Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, things like that. Poetry is Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Songs of Solomon books like that. It's all broken down in that aspect as well as the New Testament and Old Testament. So when it comes to what I do with my Bible recap, so on the bottom right of my phone, you're going to see the Holy Bible app and you're going to need to open that up and then you're going to type in the Bible recap in the app and it's going to be this blue uh, image above right where you see um, on this page. I just finished up Job and I'm going through Genesis right now, which is really nice because it aligns perfectly with my seamless study that I'm going through right now. If you are reading the Bible in a year or wanting to read the Bible in a year, you can hop on the Bible recap whenever you want. Just know that you'll finish within that year. Like you don't have to hop on when it starts. You can start whenever because you go at your own pace. And so it has a section for each chapter where you can read the Bible there. And what I love to do is you can check them off as you're done reading. Right here where it says devotional, you click on that and then you scroll down and then it has this video where it says the Bible recap. And once you click on that, this is where you're gonna see the host and the author. Her name's Tara Lee. I love her, she's so sweet. And she does the recap of those verses that you are reading that day or that week. Some days you go over three chapters, some days there's five chapters. It just depends on how long the chapters are. But she takes you through the Bible in chronological order. So that's why I love this. You know, if you are looking for a place to start, I recommend that because it's just super light and then she explains everything in the video of what you just read. Last topic that I want to talk about is just going through my routine and what that really looks like, but it can be different for a lot of people. I have felt this past month this is what works best for me because in July and August it was really like a test trial for me trying to figure out what time of day works best for me, how much I want to read, how I want to divide up my reading because I'm in three different groups. So just kind of figuring that out. First, I like to make a cup of coffee or a tea, just depending on when I'm reading. I obviously don't have coffee before bed, but I like to set the mood, which typically is just a candle, honestly. And then I find a place to read. Um, if my husband's watching football in the living room, I'll come in my bedroom, shut the door, 
have some quiet time. I just like to have that quality one-on-one -on -one time with the Lord. I also listen to my Christian playlist while I'm reading. I put it on low so that I'm not super distracted, but just having that peace with God and trying to listen to the Holy Spirit speak through me has been something that I've really, really tried to focus on. I then like to start off reading the word by praying to God and ask him to help open my eyes to things that I might not have seen in the past or maybe something that I might have missed to help me fully understand and grasp his word because I know that he's the only one that can help me fully understand the Bible and I can't just learn by myself. So once I'm done with prayer, I then open up my homework, whether it's seamless study and I have to like write out my answers or whatever, or reading this book. I take my own notes on this book in my journal because there's not a lot of places to write notes in this book. So that's why this is super handy to have. The thing about seamless is it's broken down into different days. I think there's just five days. Each week has its own like couple days broken down by five days they have it has their own discussion questions in here as well like I said if you have any questions about this book it could be a little bit overwhelming at first but I promise it's so easy to grasp so whatever that day I need to finish if I need to just finish day one's homework I'll complete that after that I read my bible recap like I said this is why I'm telling you that my Bible time takes an hour because I literally have so much reading going on and I found that like 45 minutes to an hour is what works best for me. If I have some extra time though, I will jump ahead and read like two days, sometimes even three days worth of my Bible recap because there are some days where I cannot get to reading the Bible. Like, I'm sorry, but it happens. After I read the scripture, I then watch the video by Tara Lee that she always has, and that's kind of how I end my reading. And then after all my reading, I end the night in prayer, and that's just some time where I thank him for all the good he's done in my husband and I's life, but my life as well. I thank him for the freedom to read his word and live in a world where I can freely do that. And then that's where I lift up any prayer requests that either I have or other people have. All right, that is it for my ultimate Bible study little session that I had. I hope you guys enjoyed it, learned some helpful tips and tricks. Again, if you want me to go more in detail or make videos like this again, I would really like to hear your feedback because this is just the first video that I'm putting out there that's a lot different from everything else on my channel and I kind of want to produce content that you guys like as well so if you guys want any prayer requests please again feel free to DM me email me whatever your heart desires I would love to pray over you guys um, and I also have some people on this platform that have been so nice asking how they can pray for me and honestly I just ask for prayers over this platform right now because I've just really been like where do you want me how do you want me to use this platform because I'm only on this platform because the Lord has given me this platform and I just want to keep using it for his glory so just prayers for me to get those answers from the Lord and for the Lord to use me for his glory and to bring more people to his kingdom so but with that being said thank you guys again and i will see you guys next time bye